Hello, weirdos and weirdettes. It's me, Haunted. Today, we're going to continue our work on the Haunted Spires kit. Um, we did a good bit of work on the uh, the rooftop last time. We'll continue some of that. I did a little bit after stream, just to, you know, do some of the base coats that are boring to watch because you know everybody knows how to put a base coat on. Hopefully, uh, so I did a little bit of that. So I did, but I didn't want to do too much, you know. So, uh, same here. I put a base coat of this off white on the base here. We'll be working on the bricks and stuff today. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Alrighty, so let's get some bricky kind of colors out here. We got some black red, we got some burnt red and some calvary brown there's one there's an orange red i think but i don't have that like in range so we'll just go with i think burnt red to start because we're going to be dropping a, a dark wash on there um i could probably go with calvary brown honestly uh for the bricks because we're going to be doing a purple wash um but i'm pretty sure when we did this building here, I'm almost 100% certain that we did a burnt red as a base, then a purple wash, and then did our edging and brought these bricks up. So I'm almost positive this is a recipe. It's been since June. No, not June. Uh, August, September, somewhere around there of last year. It's been a while. So I can't quite remember, but I think that's it. <laughs> it is very... <laughs> We're working on Haunted's Haunted Spires. Hey, Doug, how are you doing? Sorry, I did not have my chat pulled up quite yet. I happen to see the office ones I painted up today. And man, I'm so happy how they turn out. And that's nice. Or the haunted spire, haunted square. <laughs> I like that. Clearly, you need to fill your your spire with chicken ghosts. <laughs> Is that what I was paying? Yeah, uh, that was not the plan. No, but uh, now that you mention it, it sounds like a good idea. <laughs> All right, let's get us started. <laughs> Um, just a word of advice, don't don't stab your brush into the miniature like I'm doing unless it's a junk brush. This brush is 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 DOA, so it's okay, but yeah, it, it will wreck a brush real quick and in a hurry if you stab it like this. Although that is a valid painting technique, doing stipulism, just po poking, making little dots of paint. Um, I've used it on in many miniatures uh, for either texturing or uh, a form of blending and it comes out quite nice but it does destroy a brush like I said kind of therapeutic you know stab 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 stabby stab but um yeah it will it will wreck a brush so make sure you're using a junk brush These um these crevices are really deep. Like in most of them, the primer did not actually get down in there when I was spraying. So it's basically bare plastic in there. Shouldn't matter a whole lot if as long as I get it mostly covered, especially like the top surfaces, the the wash should take care of the rest, I think. I want to see a model painted all with nothing but stippling. Uh, yeah, I mean it's possible. You could do it. Um I might take that as a challenge one day, doing a, a model entirely that way. I have to amass a selection of brushes that are, are dead, but yeah, I could probably do that. 
I've done I've done quite a few still lifes and nothing but that with uh, rapidograph pens. So I'll have to see if I can pull it up, but I've got a picture of uh, of my old Reeboks from high school done in nothing but dots. And let me tell you, that must have been a billion and a half dots of ink. <laughs> The pointillism challenge. Yes, yes, yes. Be better than that. Um, oh God, what is the name of it? It starts with an S. The that pickled herring challenge. Certainly better than that one. God, I cannot imagine anybody doing that one. <laughs> Anything that triggers your gag reflex when you open the, the box is not going to go in my mouth. <laughs> this, um, I can't remember. Is it Swedish or <sighs> Icelandic or it was it's one of those. One of those uh, places, but they, they make this pickled herring and the smell of it is just so god awful. Um, but now people are doing this as a challenge for internet fame. <laughs> if you think uh, shoes are a lot of dots, have you ever seen it Sunday afternoon? Well, yeah, I mean, I know, but I'm just saying for for a high school student with ADD, a pair of shoes in the surrounding era background with dots is a lot. <laughs> a lot to stay focused on. There's one thing I actually did not ever finish on it was there was a, um, there was a bottle of Dr. Scholl's uh, foot powder next to it. And I never finished the text in the label. Like the label's there, um, the little, you know, ovals there for for the Dr. Scholl name and stuff. But I did not finish doing the words in it. But it's one of those things like, eh, it gets the point across. Oh, oh, like, yeah, I've never seen, I don't know the actual size of it. I had no idea how big it was. I just, you know, it's a, it's a, I figure somewhere in the area 24 by 36 or something like that. Well, it's good to see you. Appreciate you coming in, Doug. How have you been today? You had a pretty good stream last night, didn't you, man? The bear was looking very cool. <laughs> it was a long stream. How long was it? Four hours? Or more just a, a time when it was finished kind of thing. Like it was late 1 a.m. or whatever for you. Not just the time that it ran. I, um, I was kind of hoping to actually print one of those things off, paint it uh, before the, the, the Kickstarter ended. I, I didn't know it was ending so soon or I would have probably pushed a little harder to get it uh, printed and painted. So my apologies on that. Did 
three hours and 49 minutes. Yeah. I, I, I go f- four hours fairly often and I feel that one mainly from the standpoint of, Oh my God, I've sat in one place for four solid hours. Jeez. I can't move anymore. Um, so I'm going to have to start like, I know I always feel weird about, you know, getting up and walking off screen that, that people are going to disappear while I'm, I'm doing that, but I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and do it because that sitting in one place so long is rough. <laughs> After things close out, we've got time to do to a deliver pushing promotion ending. Oh, okay. All right, cool. All right. Yeah, I figured you might have, you know, like uh late pledging and stuff like that. So there was a potential to get in there and still maybe make a difference. Just all well done with one wall here. Woo! Ow! One whole wall. Well, the one thing I have been kind of going back and forth on with this particular thing is because the other one I I did um, true metallic metals on the door handle. The few places that it had metal, I did. I did a, uh, I did true metallic metal, and I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to do that with this one, because the idea is to kind of do them quick, so that they're pretty, and serviceable, um, and I can come back and and touch them up later, as I have more time. So I'm I'm trying to debate whether I'm going to do true metallic or if I'm going to do. Um, non-metallic metal on these on this particular one um it is a much larger building there is more metal on it so i'm i'm thinking that we'll probably still do the true metallic on it and just come back later at another time once they're once they're done and and complete that portion like i said it, it gives a a nice i think uh you can show it both ways you can say look you can do it this way or you can do it this way and you know you can come back to it later and finish it up with non-metallic metals and i think i think that's probably what i'm going to do they're going to have late pledging and once all the backers have them then they will be available for just normal sale at a price higher than kickstarter that that makes total sense 100 percent all righty Okay, so let's move on around. Back on this side now. The other thing I did not do, and it should be noticeable because the, the seams are a little large here. I did not glue this one shut because at some point I'm going to come back in um, and magnetize one of these walls so that can open up probably the door side. Um, I think that's the one that opens up easiest. Um, magnetize that wall, paint the interior so that we can have it and uh, potentially wire it for, for LED lighting so we can use it as like a diorama for or a backdrop for um, models when we do like a single solo picture or something like that. That's the plan anyways. I figure, you know, these uh these buildings kind of deserve some extra. And I, I like that they have the nice interior and stuff. So, but at the same time, I'm trying to keep it done qu- quicker. 
Um, so yeah, I'm going to go with uh, not doing the interiors initially and catch them later. Um, and because apparently I'm incapable of relaxing ever, I'm prepping up a teaser video for the new Malifo GTO. <laughs> Jeez, Manini, you are a busy, busy beaver, man. No doubt. Oh, that, that creeped up a whole lot more than I thought it did. I had to touch that up. <clears throat> I don't think these side ones have as deep uh, uh, holes in between the bricks like the, the front one did. Deer near is difficult to fill. So, uh, happy hump day to everybody. I guess I hadn't said it already. Guess what day it is. Bet you thought those commercials had died in a fire, huh? Oh, I'm bringing them back. I'm bringing the camel back. Okay. A couple of bubbles there. Let's see if we can pop those. There we go. Good, good, good. Why I'm using a crap load of this uh this brick red here or uh, burnt red. Lots and lots of it. Yeah, that looks about right. I think once the wash goes down there, that'd be the perfect color. Idea once that we get this this blocked in get the wash going it can be drying while i'm working on other things that's the idea without me having to break out the hair dryer <clears throat> Good thing that's dry, huh? I just stuck my fingers right in it. <laughs> we still have these little random bricks on the side that we'll have to do as well. Ugh. But those can wait a little bit. They're not like the main bricks. We can work on those after the fact.
Also, uh, Kim, you're going to have to send me pictures of the ones that you did because you said again today that you checked them and they still hold up. I, I'd like to see them like I've seen them. The ones I've seen painted were the ones uh, Brian did and, and the ones Angel did. So I really want to see yours. Okay. Definitely get a little brick color here. Got some bubbles over here. Let's pop those real quick. Bubbles most of the time will go away, but sometimes in the most unexpected circumstances, when you don't want them to stay, they stay. So I try to pop them where I can. It's particularly important on like a big flowy surface like a cape because i've had a couple times where a bubble has stayed there and then when you try and pop it you know you've got this little blemish in the surface they're just a big old mess so always pop the bubbles if you can it helps it's one of those things you have to deal with unfortunately when you're painting with uh thin paints and especially when you're poking into these little air spaces and stuff you're gonna get bubbles but yeah always try and pop them if you can Um, so am I excited? I got a shipment of brushes coming from Broken Toad. They uh, made it to Jamaica, New York the other day. I have no idea where they are now because the tracking number is a, it's a UK shipping number. So uh, it says arrived in Jamaica, US and or Jamaica, New York. And that's all the information I have. I don't know when it's going to be out for delivery. <laughs> but at least they made it to the U.S., and I don't think they're stuck in customs, so that makes me happy. I do love my broken toad brushes. I figure... Uh, so I'm gonna have to pay for the the big hunk of shipping. May as well order a bunch. So I ordered ten brushes. It was a little painful in the wallet, but <laughs> at least I had to worry about them for a while. That's a that's at least ten commissions. So because I'm I'm rough on my brushes. I am oh, as you see, I'm just stabbing with this one, but uh, I'm very rough on them. Put a lot of metallics on which that's something you're not supposed to do with Kalinsky sables is put metallic paints on them. Um, I use a lot of washes with them, which washes tend to go up your ferrule um, and deposit little residual paint. So my, my brushes tend to last a single commission and they're done, which is fine. That pays for them, but. With brushes being a little bit harder to source, a little more expensive now because of the the whole um, Russia Ukraine thing, I figure uh, get some extra while I can. I 
Um, I have had really, really horrible luck with Windsor Newton. I've gotten one brush out of 30 that have been good. So I don't know whether I'm getting seconds, imposters, or what. But I have never had... I've only had one good Windsor Newton brush. And... Uh, so I just I switched over to broke. Well, I switched over to Sharf, and then from there to Broken Toad. I'd probably still be with with uh, Sharf if uh, if they hadn't had a, a momentary lapse in a uh, stock that made me try Broken Toad. Once I tried Broken Toad, I was like, eh, I'm not going back. <laughs> but I do like the Sharf brushes, and they had a they had a. Um, Atlanta distribution node, so they were easy to get. Um, or easier to get. One thing I saw that was pretty interesting, I, I, I talked to Win, uh, Windsor Newton not too long ago um, about their brushes, because I, I sent them, a, they were out of stock, and I asked them, you know, real talk here, when and if or if and when are you going to get some new brushes in, <laughs> uh, in this size? And um, because I, you know, I knew th this supply lines were were basically in trouble. Um, and we talked about that a little bit. And the, the representative to told me that they actually had developed a lot of synthetics that they said had the same or very similar snap and point retention as our Kalinsky Sables. Um, and so I'm probably going to try some of those just to see how they work. Um, I figure if, if uh, Windsor and Newton's doing it, it's probably going to be pretty good. And they do, they have uh, U.S. distribution nodes too, so you don't have to pay that huge overseas shipping. You just pay from like, you know, New York or whatever to wherever. Your FLGS carries broken toad. Nice. Nice. Um, there is one store that I know of that carries this uh first Phoenix or something, something with a bird of some sort. And that's where I was getting my broken toad, but the like the last three orders of them, they've been all had bad lead hairs. Um and I was afraid they might might have been selling seconds or something. So I just went direct to the source and got them directly from Broken Toad. So we'll see if it was just a problem with the U.S. distribution line or if it's a problem with Broken Toad itself. <laughs> they said that, but they've yet sent... Yeah, I mean, I, I've yet to find one either, but I would trust Windsor Newton to do it right if it was going to be done right, you know? So they're such a big name and they have such a long, a long history and, you know, tradition and stuff like that. I figure if they do it, if they say they can do it, they can do it, but we'll just have to try it and see. The good thing is they're not that expensive. Um, so it wouldn't be a, a big deal to try it and, See if they're good. I do like Broken Toad, but I mean, I like I like the idea and, like I said, the tradition and the name of Windsor Newt. I just have not had good luck picking them up here. The one brush I got that was good was really fucking, pardon my French, really good. Um, it, it lasted for many years, but it was just one brush out of many. Um, so, yeah. Do, 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 do. All right, we are almost ready for the wash. And we can work on other things.
Now, um, Broken Toad has a has a, a synthetic line too. Now, they don't make the wild claims that they're almost as good as Kalinsky Sable, but they say they're a very good quality uh, synthetic. So, I do have one of those. Eventually, I'm going to break into it. May do a may do a face to face or side by side comparison if I can get a hold of one of the Windsor Newton ones and see how it stacks up. Okay, I think that has got this area fully covered. Okay, we'll get a wash going. Before I do that, I'll show you. They have a really cool brush handle too. It's like this green gray, almost like ashy kind of color. It's a uh, <laughs> imitation sable. That's uh that's one of them there. Like I said, it has a really nice looking point. Just don't know how long it will keep it. So they do they do make a synthetic line as well. Okay, need to find my purple. Where is my true to violet? Mm -hmm. I can't find it. I where are you? That's soft tone. Don't want that. Um Okay, it's not Drew Violet, but it will do. This is the Army Painter Purple Tone. We'll use this instead. I may have been what I used last time. I don't remember. Like I said, it's been since September or something since I worked on these. August, September, or somewhere, somewhere is around there. Summers. I'm going to give it a little bit of flow aid. Maybe to stretch it out a little bit. Not so much to, to make it flow better. I mean, it's a, it's a wash, but I mean, it, uh, that's a significant amount of area I've got to cover. So I'm just doing it to stretch it some. And you know what? This paint is not even fully dry in the front. I may have uh, gotten ready too soon. This one's relatively dry. Let's start over here. We, uh, we may mute here in a second to to hit those other areas with the with the hair dryer. To get them to hurry up and dry. And pop them bubbles where you can. Because otherwise they will rear their ugly heads. Okay. I'm going to mute real quick, or mute my mic. should be muted. If it's not, uh, Kim, be on the ready to mute the, the stream.
Okay, sorry about that. That should get it mostly done. It's mostly dry. Hopefully my mute button did keep you guys from losing your eardrums. Okay. So we got that side over here to the front side. Or back side, I guess this is the back side. Oh, Captain Sneezy Pants with the stealth entrance. Well, probably not stealth entrance. He was probably sneezing the whole way in here, but because of the hairdryer, I did not hear him. But he has graced us with his presence today. All hail the, the sneezy pants. Rejoice, for he is here. There he is. Yes, we hear you, sir. I think uh, as much as I want to use that flow aid to stretch it, I'm just not going to be able to because it just one of the things about flow aid, very, very frothy. So as for those bubbles that we've been trying to avoid. So I'm just going to use straight wash. Sure, I'll, I'll waste a lot, but oh well. Oh, wow. We froze up there for a second, didn't we? The cat's greatness overcame the Internet's ability to uh, show him. The greatness of cat. We still have a, uh, we still have those lovely spires to work on too. Um, they they need the uh, treatment that the roof got, where they had the the uh, random color patterning, patterning pat, pattern of the uh, shingles that are different colors. We're gonna do that on those as well. That'll probably be the next step while this all is drying. There's just so much surface area on these guys. I mean, even doing, you know, quickie methods, it still takes a while to get these babies painted. Imagine if you're doing it like, you know, really painting, no, no dry brush, doing every edge by hand. Oh, my lordy, that would take a while.
Okay. That's about done with this wash here. Got that all covered in there. Now we'll go back and work on our spires. Um, see here, I think we may have to do um, the last highlight color. I think I did um, written down here somewhere. I think it was two white to one Adriatic blue was the final highlight. Yeah, that was the first highlight. Though I'm talking about the second highlight. I think I think it was the two white to to one Adriatic. Or maybe it was. Uh, I don't know. I have it somewhere. Yeah, it was two white to three blue for the first highlight, and then it was two white to one blue for the final, I think. Yeah. Yep. But we're naming the, the second highlight, and I think this is it here. The old canoodle. It doesn't remember as well as it used to. We're going to use our trusty little elf makeup brush, eyeshadow brush. This is a relatively cheap brush, even today still. Um, I need to make myself a note to go get some more. Like, the next time I do a train project, I want to have, have one of these brushes for every color that I'm using. That way I don't have to uh, continually clean the thing over and over again. I guess that's good enough. It just doesn't look quite the same, but they're also smaller shingles, so it kind of increases the um, the amount of darkness they have because of the wash. You know, they're close; it's closer together. Hey, McBuff, how are you doing? Welcome in. Yeah, okay. I think that looks good enough. Okay, so now we just need to do the... Uh, the random tile pattern. With this, so we'll need some from my favorite Warlord Purple Fuchsia. Of course, some Hex Lichen, my, one of my next favorite colors. Doing good here. Doing good here, friend. Have you done any more work lately? I've not seen anything. 
but I know you're busy, busy. A little bit of uh, Thousand Suns Blue. My favorite color to use. That is a really, really tough choice. I always try to incorporate, well, I don't always, but very often try and incorporate some purple somewhere, which usually involves these two colors, um, the Hex Icon and the Warlord Purple. My next favorite probably is bright green. So we're talking like the moot green and, and uh, where is it? Uh, Warpstone green uh, combo. A little bit of flash gets in there to bring it up even brighter. Um, I love purples and greens. I always have. Bright turquoise. That's a good color. Uh, how does it compare to this uh, Adriatic blue? The one that's uh, the scale 75. How does it compare to that? That turquoise. Every one you paint has brown. Well, when you when you paint Malifaux, you're going to paint them a lot of brown because there's a lot of leather. And, you know, they have kind of a little fetish, I think. <laughs> there's a lot of leather on weird models. <clears throat> Okay, painting these things, colors, that's what we're doing. Bit more green, but same level of coldness. Okay, nice. All right, so basically what I'm looking for is tiles that the, the highlight have kind of um, have messed it up. Ooh, wow, that was cool. Um first and foremost those get priority for colorization Deep Ocean Marine Teal Surf Aqua Triad looks comparable to what I'm using. Nice. And that's that's MSP. I tell you, I really I'm a big fan of paints that have good coverage. Because I don't typically like putting lots and lots and lots and lots of coats down. And then but at the same time, the Reaper paints I've tried, I've really liked, even though they do tend to be, I think they're meant more for glazing, more for, you know, blending glazing. And so they're very, very thin and um, have low opacity. Um, but the colors are really nice. So I'm, I'll probably end up picking up the rest of that flesh range, just, like I said, because I, I picked up the uh, the tan flesh as as an experiment just to see, because I was really kind of tired of your typical, um, where is it? I'm gonna find it now. Naturally, it, it evades me when I'm looking for it. Um, but your typical like you know, barbarian flesh or whatever or, or tan flesh. That you see from Army Painter or the Kislev or whatever from GW, they're a very orange base. They look nothing like skin at all. Um, but this tan skin. So there's your, you know, your shadow here, the darkest shadow. This tan shadow and um, hand highlight, and then there's one other one. Those actually look like skin tone. Um, so I've, I've really, really gotten to where I, I like that. So I'm going to probably end up buying the rest of their skin tone line. Yeah, it looks like a spray tan. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I'm definitely going to move to MSP for for my um, for my fleshes, flesh colors. What, cat? What? Oh, my goodness. You're so needy.
Yeah, I, I, I know you're a big. You need to get on the sponsorship program with them. You know, I mean, it's even you'd be able to get in like a, a C or D level, I think, and that's enough to get like twenty five dollars worth of paint a month. That's not a bad deal. I know, but like I said, they ha they have different levels. And like some of this small fry, like you or I would probably fit in the C or D level. So give them a contact, you know, drop them a message and see. I mean, the worst they can say is no. Right. Mm -hmm. Oof, I really want to paint all four of those. Those look horrible. What happened there? I guess it was the end of the end of the or the tip of the the tower, and it just caught all the dry brush. Caught it all. Okay. I think maybe one back here somewhere. Yeah, that one looks good right there. Right for the plucking or the painting in this case. <laughs> and then we have our uh, off white and uh, a thousand sun blue to do. So. When I see just this little bit of the roof here, it kind of makes me think of uh, the uh, the inn in Goldshire and World of Warcraft because you know that blue roof it had. Just seeing it on the screen over there, it's not in real good focus for me, but that's what I see with my in my mind's eye. Okay. I'll have to look at that after a stream, Kim. Thank you for uh, sharing that with me. Not familiar with. Uh, I guess you didn't play Alliance in it. It may may not have been Goldshire. I think it was Goldshire, but I can't remember. But it was like the first town right outside of uh, Stormwind. Did I see the person who makes narrative cinematic YouTube battle reports? Ooh, that sounds interesting. I saw one that was done. They did like some animations and stuff for each of the activations or for the specials that were cast during activation and stuff like that. That was really slick looking. Um, and it was, I think, a 10 minute battle report, which was beautiful because, you know, most battle reports drag on and on and on. And I'm so dang tired of them that I never finish them. Um, but with it being 10 minutes long, it uh, came in under that, you know, that attention span deficit 
window. So I was able to watch the whole thing, but I can't remember who did it. It was really na nice. They had like, you know, animated fire effects and stuff like that. It was pretty cool. Yeah, that's a that's a big problem with battle reports. Getting the information in that needs to be in without it getting boring. That is a very tough balance to strike. Why would I play Alliance? <laughs> I had to play Alliance because when I first started playing MMOs, I was in Star Wars Galaxies. And I love Star Wars Galaxies. Still love ga Galaxies. It's the game that every other game is measured against. And I still play on emus of it because I love it that much. Um, but our guild was very tight-knit. Um, we were a part of the uh, Imperial Dominion. Um, Bria, which was a collaboration of all the biggest, best PvP-oriented uh, Imperial guilds on the server. Um, I mean, most of the leaders were former military, so they would get together and strategize, you know, battle plans and stuff like that. We were efficient. We just wrecked rebels everywhere we went. Um, so I thought when WoW came out and half the guild split off to go to WoW, half the guild stayed in, in SWG, I took over the SWG guild. Um I thought Horde was kind of the Imperials of WoW, so naturally figured we would go Horde. I wanted to go Horde. Um, but one of the co-leaders, um, their wife, I think girlfriend at that time, fiance at that time, whatever, didn't like Horde because they were ugly. And therefore, they went Alliance. And so I had to go to Alliance to follow my guild. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Mal. Mal, tell us all about it, cat. Tell us all about how you've been mistreated today. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I am. Um, gee, forgot where I was going with that. Man, it sucks to get old. <laughs> Anyways, just going to finish up this couple of tiles here with the off white. Mm, where I want this one. That one's kind of red. Let's do it there. Now, once the, uh, I'll go back and finish the little story. Once the, the guild started getting older and, you know, going their separate ways, getting married, you know, jobs, responsibilities, stuff like that. And they had to start splitting ways. I, um, I rolled horde. <laughs> but as a result, I have, uh, 10, 10 fully leveled horde and 10 fully leveled alliance characters. Well, not fully leveled anymore. I did not do the last X pack. K. 
Okay, that one's done there. Oh, the other one's on top. That's it. Der, der, der. So again, just looking, identifying the most um, effed up tiles. That's ones we will put paint first or put a priority on painting. Hell, is that like a good one up there? It's, um, it's a relatively small piece. Let's go to Fuchsia on that one. Uh, dry brush got a little wackadoodle there. up as well. be done here hopefully we're still maintaining kind of a randomized pattern um, it's the attempt here to keep it random but yet cover those tiles that the dry brush kind of messed up on So how about them Academy Awards, people? <laughs> that was crazy. I was probably about tired of hearing about it. Welcome back, McBluff. <laughs> well, I'm sure you've seen the 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 part about the the slap from uh, Will Smith uh, to Chris Rock. That will live in infamy for ages. I mean, I, I kind of get it. That was maybe a little over the line, even for you know a comedian. But, um, yeah, the slap was definitely over the line. And welcome back if I didn't already say it. I think I did. But if I didn't, welcome back. <laughs> I 
Now, the other thing we plan to do eventually is we'll come back to this model, revisit it, and paint, you know, little edging and stripes, like ridges on each and every one of these tiles. But it's one of those things that we'll come back to, like when we magnetize it and stuff. These are things that, are, that can be done later. Doesn't have to all be done right away. Get a good looking result. Relatively low work. And then come back and detail it further later. Welcome. Um did you did you hear me ask about uh current projects have you got anything uh you're currently working on or uh recently finished i haven't seen anything in my uh my discord lately don't want to paint one of those i think i'm not Still working on the animatic. Doing them. Hey, no apologies. I was just curious. <laughs> I'm not your boss. <laughs> I just I, I do enjoy seeing seeing the stuff. I was curious if you'd had time to work on it more. I suppose it could touch up that purple one a little bit better. School's been keeping you busy. I gotcha. Designing character is nice. Got the tiles there set up. Drink here. And take a look at my um, reference. Ha, 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 ha. 
Let's see. Look at it from this direction. Huh. Okay. So this uh this pointed bit here is actually kind of blue like the rest of the stuff. So it's the dark blue working to light blue kind of a stippled pattern. Kind of a rusty color here on this piece. And that piece up there. And this piece is also kind of rusty. All right. We we may end up doing these non-metallic metal thin since they're they're not really done up in your typical non-metallic metal style. Um, it's more just like a, a dirty base coats, I guess, is the best way to say it. So we may just do them like that. Uh, let's see here. Get some. Da, 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 da. There we go. That's what I'm after. Sepia shade. Sorry. My brain took a, a vacation there. I have. I, I, I really, I like the terrain. Um, it's a, uh, it's lower key than uh, miniature painting. Cause I always feel like, I feel like I'm having to do, I feel like I want to do one miniature or stream kind of thing most of the time. So I feel like I'm really under this, this extreme time pressure. Even though I'm not, it's self-imposed. It's just something I want to do. Like if I do a miniature, I want to get it done in a single stream setting um, or two max. And and with the train, I feel a little bit more relaxed. It's a, it's a larger project. So I don't know. I, I just, I like it. I love the pieces more than anything. The 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 pieces, the terrain pieces are just so pretty. So I, I'd love to spend like months painting them, you know, really painting them up. But uh, I don't think uh, I don't think uh, it would fly fly well doing that. <laughs> I think I almost need a black here, really, to, to get those little bitty grooves. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I said, just I love the train. It's so pretty. Um, I'm hoping one day we get we get some more. Um, whoop, let me leave this back just a little bit. That we get some more um, options for it. Because, you know, I, I can build terrain. I can build pretty decent terrain, but I just don't like doing it. I'd much rather have a kit put together that pretty much goes the way it's supposed to go and, and just, you know, call it done there. <laughs> All right. Um. We want to do a dark brown rope or a light rope. What do you guys think? Or medium. We could do medium. Medium wouldn't hurt. Uh, where's my 
Dubai Brown. There we go. Lightly and focused. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Like I said, I mean, we could go light or we could go medium. I think both would be be appropriate for the blue to stand out. Dark would just be eh, too too oppressive. Uh, yeah, we'll go with this, which is nice because it's basically the same color we're working with on the wood as well. Uh, kind of experimenting with this color like you can change it up quite a bit depending on you know washes and dry brushes and stuff like that so we may even use this as the base for those um, rusted pipes as well because it is kind of versatile So just working this color around here. We'll, uh, we'll drop a little wash when we're done. And we'll go back and work on that wood some. Or we could work on the brick. Either one. Either will work. So anybody got any uh, plans for the coming pretty days, camping, vacationing, that sort of thing? Been really pleasant today, but um, the pollen count so high. It makes it almost unbearable to be outside. <laughs> Going camping this weekend. Very nice. Very nice. I know uh, um, Craig at some point is going to be doing his uh, camping for gamers. Um, I want to try and get on, in on that this year. Um It hits on a weekend. I don't have something else. <laughs> I 
I haven't been camping in ages. Uh, I haven't been camping since I could sleep on the rock with just a blanket and be okay. That That's how long it's been. So <laughs> if I could, if I want to like camping again. <laughs> been that long the body is old and busted like now I'd have to take an air mattress with me <laughs> it's happening in May oh okay all right And that's the one that Craig Craig heads up. Ah, oh, okay. Been real nice if Craig had told me that. <laughs> He's like, I'll let you know. <laughs> you could have just told me it was a Facebook group, dork. More of that Dubai Brown. I might need to switch to a slightly smaller brush. This brush is a little bit of a little overkill for this area. I'm just trying to do it for, for mass coverage. But now I'm kind of getting into detail areas. I may need to switch. Okay, mark that brown round. Dubai brown. One of my favorite new colors. I'm really digging this scale 75. One of the things, I don't know if you can tell just how matte that stuff dries it is just like 
no sheen whatsoever, 100% matte paint. Which is kind of wild. Like their, their uh, metallics have a little bit of sheen, you know. Because, well, you want you want some sheen with metallics, but boy, their regular paint just kills the shine. And some people like that, some people don't. I, I'm one of those that likes likes a matte paint, so it makes me happy. You don't have to worry about a, a reflection throwing you off, making you think that you've got a highlight that you don't. So that's one of the reasons I like a, like matte paints. We're only an hour and 42 in. Wow. I would have thought we were in longer. So I've almost finished, uh, latest anime series I got into. It's called Parasite the Maxim. Pretty good series. And I like the last four episodes. So we're almost got it finished. I messed that spot there. Dedious? You mean tedious? No, no, no. I just, I would have assumed it was further along because of how long it took me to do those bricks or how long it felt like it took me to do those bricks. Yep, the messed up talking hand. Yeah, the parasite that fails to take over his brain, so it ends up in his hand. Yeah, that's the one. A little bit of body horror involved. Kind of like uh, The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing. Boy, every time I come back and look at this, I feel a little, a little spin of mist. Okay. I think that's got it all. The wash will probably cover up whatever I didn't quite get. There's some up underneath. Let's get that real quick. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Hill Hydration. Hill Hydration. Did notice an area that I forgot the top shingles over here. So uh, I'm going to work on that real quick. Take it off here. Take it all off the roof, I mean. Delete the roof? What do you mean delete the roof? No, delete the roof. Too much time invested. Send them back into obliteration. <laughs> Oof, we got some some geek sedation going on. Internet be struggling. Probably could have filled that in a little bit, but I think it'd just be fine. It'll look like a, a crack in the roof tile or something. Yeah, that's what my head cannon says. Now, I'm sort of amazed, but we're not done yet, so I can't say much. But we have not broken anything off of this yet. But I am assuming that at some point before this is finished, one of those spires will be, or one of these points will be broken off. I mean, I hope it doesn't. I'd hate for it to, but, you know, I just have a feeling it's just inevitable. And that's not like the defeatist in me talking. That's just, you know, it's facts. <laughs> it's going to happen. Now, one other thing I'm going to be doing off screen will be the windows. Um, for this, I'm going to paint them a nice, cozy, um, warm orange yellow and airbrush a little spot highlight of yellow in the center of the windows. Since that's going to be kind of a controlled airbrush project, I'm going to do it off screen. Um, but I like I'll paint this orange yellow hidden in here and then just a nice little bright yellow in the center of the window and then I'll cut in the wood or frame around it and then we can start doing the dormers um, same thing I don't know this one I may leave black because it's boarded over um, but yeah that that is something I will be doing off stream is the, is the interior windows thank you Varric how are you doing Mm -hmm. 
Where's my brush? Oof. Wow. Okay. Got bright green on that one. Good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah, I've been having fun with it. Um, one of those things that one, I love the model, and two, is really kind of necessary because I, I need terrain. So it's it's a it's a win win. <laughs> It's good, uh, good eye candy for stream. It's something I, I like and it's something I need. So those, all three come together is a good thing. Boy, that green is really strong. It does not want to come out of there. That was um, doing the, the algae buildup or whatever on the other building. All those bright greens in the corner. But I need this brush clean. <laughs> With our powers combined. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is a win-win. Mm -hmm. And this is why I need more dry brushes. Because... I have to literally clean them between every color, and that's annoying and time consuming. So, I gotta get me some more, some more dry brushes or brushes that I can use for dry brushing. Goodness. And it's not even gotten the hard stuff out of the bristles. That's still in there. Dang, I mean, I'm sorry, guys, about this. I would have should have should have had this clean before stream. I just didn't think about it. Need a uh, Captain Planet with his powers combined to clean this brush out. Because it is a wreck. <laughs> Bus duck out. All right, Doug. Have a great day. Thank you for hanging out. Appreciate it. Good to see you as always. And Stig, how are you doing? Wait, is that rolled up new newspaper for me or Athena? I cannot get over that. I mean, I'll clean, 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 cleaning. And look, there's just paint still all up in this brush. I tell you what, I know what to fix it. I know what to fix it. A little 91% alcohol. That'll fix that little brush right up. Just don't get it anywhere near your paint. For you for not cleaning... <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I'm bad. Yeah, look at there. Almost all, all gone now. The alcohol's the trick, man. Don't do this on your Kalinsky Sables, please. The alcohol will strip every bit of oil out of the bristles and you will be, you will have a dead brush. But for synthetics, it works great.
Yeah, here we go. Now, now we're about where we need to be. Oops, we lagged out. Are y'all having thunderstorms there, Kim? We're supposed to be getting some nasty storms up here later. I was wondering if maybe y'all were getting it down there, and that's why we're getting the, the little stutters every now and then. Yes, it's, it's white now. Very little green tint to it anymore. It's almost clean. So, yeah. If you got a synthetic brush and it's really got some paint wrecked into it, get you a little bit of 91% alcohol and it'll take it right out. Okay, so what was I doing now? I kind of forgot because we were doing that. Okay, um, I think we were going to be working on this little wood section right there. So I need... Where are you? Where's my monster brown? There's my monster brown. Monster Brown. I'm going to come in with a little bit of black and, and make them lines a little bit more apparent too. Because some of them are just kind of not very deep. So we're going to... A little bit of black. Maybe a bit of uh, Rhinox. So it's not full on black, but it's going to be very, very, very dark. Okay. All righty. Make sure I got that soap off my hands. And now we'll get to this. Okay. A little bit of a, a little bit of mouth lube there. I'll come in from the side, catch this cut there, carry it around the rivet. We're just we're kind of reinforcing the wood grain. It's, it's, it's a pretty light here. So we're wanting to strengthen it up some. What are we doing with the next pair? Is there paper machine to be had? <laughs> no, Lama, he was saying for me, uh, not having cleaned my brushes, I deserve the newspaper. Try to hit this area pretty good here underneath this.
while that black brown is still there trying i just kind of drag the brown through it and make it my own woke up earlier than expected today so to keep my awake i started watching our flag being says how is that i have um i was waiting to see it and i just i kind of have not gotten to it yet It definitely looks like one of those that you have to really be in the mood for slapstick. And those those moods don't hit me that often, honestly. I used to do it a lot more. Um, but now it's like... Slapstick used to be a cure-all for anything. And now it's gotten to where I, like I have to be in a specific mood for it. It's kind of funny. It's great, fun, good representation too. Nice, nice. Well, I know when I first saw it, the first thing I thought of was the uh, the pirate captain from Stardust. I can't think of what his name was, but he was played by Robert De Niro. And he was a, a show tune loving, cross-dressing pirate. And he was just, he blew that role away. He was so good. Would not have expected Robert De Niro to pull that off, but he did. Your family is drawn in into flag means death. Nice. Well, that's two 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 high recommendations for it. So I will definitely have to go watch it now. I actually, I watched one I, I didn't think I was going to um, called uh, uh, The Righteous uh, Gemstones about a televangelist family. And it's it's uh, got, got John Goodman in it and uh, Jesse, oh uh, God, what's his name? Can't think of his last name, but he's been in a couple of uh, Will Ferrell movies. Um And you know, it kind of shows the 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 corruption and entitlement and stuff that goes with these big uh, televangelist families. But there's some points it's just really, really, really cringe. Like you just you you want them to just shut their mouths because they're just being so cringe. Um, but it actually ends up being kind of a good show. Like they they kind of come together as a family and and get things done, and it's it's kind of interesting, but. Boy, there's some some tough stuff to get through first. Yeah, I'm curious. The the way she said it made it sound like it was maybe the family, but not her that was into it. Haven't been watching much lately except Severance. Uh, is that the one where they like go in, separate your 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 work life and your social life entirely, so it's so almost like you, so you can work undistracted. Ooh, Moon Knight, nice. Now, is that a is that an Apple TV exclusive? Because that's one streaming service I don't have. Might explain why I've not seen it yet. Severance is okay. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. Why I hadn't seen it. They've been putting out some good stuff. I just or what looks like good stuff. I just. 
I can't afford every streaming service at the same time. Just can't. Sorry. I'd like to, but I can't. How do I keep hitting the edge? Didn't nick, nick the paint, thankfully. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I mean, the whole movement was, you know, cut cut your cable. You know, it'd be cheaper to do streaming services. But then when you when you have 17 streaming services you need to be involved with at 10 bucks to 15 bucks a piece. Guess what? You're paying more than you do for satellite TV. <laughs> so uh, where's that savings? Sure, if you only went with one streaming service, sure, you'd be doing a lot cheaper. But uh, who in their right mind is only going to have one streaming service? Good to see you, Tiger. How you doing? We're going to be working on your uh, your ninjas again this weekend. Work is messing with your life. Oh, no. That's no good. Darn that work and real life responsibility crap. That's not fun. Oops. <laughs> Gay ninjas. Um thinking about doing possibly the charm orders maybe this weekend or at least starting on them I, don't know. I should be able to finish my guess but that's what I'm thinking about doing Okay, got this planks done, I think. Yeah, no, let's do this over here. Bring that up a little bit. Do that on all the edges here. Awesome. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll work on those then. Um, do a little bit of, uh, I'm going to do thunder and gray, dark gray first. They are pretty cool models. The only thing I'm not particularly fond of is, is the mask on their face. I get it, but I don't know. They look a little goofy. Um, but yeah, other than that, they're a very cool model. Okay. 
I tell you what, this is, these big models are so cumbersome to try and work with. Keep knocking into things. I'm telling you, one of those spires is going to die by the time this is done. It's just a fact. <laughs> Get just a little bit of black here, or that dark brown stuff. Cut back in. Around that bolt a little bit. Now, let's get a little lighter. We're going with London Gray here. I don't even know if y'all can see the um, the bolts that I'm working on. But hopefully, once this dot goes down, you'll see them. Come at it from the top two-thirds. And then we're going to drop a white. For this, we use a um, very fresh, tiny brush here. Those are done. Okay. All right, get some black again. Plain black by Zell. Check my reference real quick. Huh. That is interesting. This spire. That I can't see for some reason. I'm going to zoom in. Uh... It's like a whitish purple. That's interesting. This one right here is like a whitish purple. And now I can't see the tops of any of the spires for some reason. How messed up is this? Oh, well. I know what I needed. This is supposed to be a lighter color. I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm probably going to do it black. But I'm going to go ahead and start painting these, um, these little iron pieces black. They'll eventually kind of be made up to a, um, a blue-black uh, non-metallic look oh, up on my screen.
thought I had uh, rubbed that corner again on here. Seems to be happening a lot. Uh, has other just told you he thinks there's a chance he may... Oh. <laughs> uh. And no, I, I don't think I did tell you, but what I was trying to do was get your commission done um, in time to hand deliver it for that event. Because, well, you know, every time we send it, no matter how carefully I pack it, at least one snaps off his base. I figure I'm going to bring it to you. <laughs> so give me an excuse to come down if I can. Yeah, yeah. It'd be nice to like actually catch your um your reaction in real time too, rather than afterwards. I mean you always see pictures beforehand or most of the time, so but like I said it'd be cool to get it real time. Oopsie. Definitely gonna fix that up. Do, 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 do. Yep, that's the plan. If I can get them done in time. I don't know if I'll be, I don't know if I'll compete. I'll probably try and catch a game with, uh, with Matt again, or if, if he's, I think he's running this one, isn't he? Um, maybe I can get a game with you then if you're, if you're not uh, competing in it. I'll still uh, I'll still pay entry fee, even though I'm not gonna compete in it. Just because I want to help out with the the prize support and stuff. He's the TO this time. Planning on to be the ringer. Okay. I gotcha. Well, I know it's not, but you know, like I said, figure something that can help out a little bit. I mean, if I'm going to be, I mean, I, I technically shouldn't have been involved in the prize pool last time. So, and I was, so um, if I'm going to be involved in it. I should at least contribute, even if I don't play the game. Okay, so we're just continuing to paint these uh these little spires black here are these uh stakes spikes whatever we want to call them these doodads here
Just paint, 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 paint. Happy little spike. You're painting a happy little spike. There you go. And I just don't know about that one. That one bugs me. I'm going to probably paint it black too. <laughs> I think what I need to do is set a towel down on this table so this corner does not get the the paint nicked off of it because it keeps dragging on the table when I'm trying to keep it in frame. Get to paint some cool purple on that banner. That's always fun. I think one of the, the things that makes me happiest about these buildings is having that, uh, that artwork done by on hell with the bright colors showing you that you know buildings don't have to be grim dark they can be pretty and bright and i think that's great that's why i'm i'm emulating it or being inspired by whatever you want to call it i'm painting them in similar color similar fashions just because I love, well, I always like bright colors. That's kind of goes without saying. But um, to be able to do it on buildings is a really nice change, I think. It feels like, you know, you got to paint wood tones and stone and, you know, darkness and stuff. But buildings can be bright, shiny, and fun, too. Some nightshade purple from MSP. Doug's gone, but he would be proud. Another MSP paint being used. This will be our our base color for the flag. Probably not going to see a whole lot of it. It'll probably just be showing through in the shadows. It's a really dark purple, like, um, like an eggplant, I guess. Best uh, real world ana analogy to this color. Hard to tell on camera. It's probably showing up. It's just pure black. But it is a, a very, 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 very dark purple.
So I guess my question is, out of the people that have seen this, who plans on grabbing these buildings to paint? Who's going to paint them next? That's what I want to know. Hashtag show me your weird scape. And do you plan on painting it like uh, the bright colors or are you going to do more of a traditional grimdark kind of look? that yeah you got your set done <laughs> okay Let me check my uh, reference again That's crazy. I cannot get the uh, the spires to zoom in anymore. Even though they show on the thumbnail, cannot see them in the exploded view anymore. That is disappointing. Okay. Um. I think we said we we're going to do this one. Let's do this one. Uh, Rhinox Brown. Rhinox by itself. Here we go. So we're gonna paint this brown X brown. We'll bring in some some maybe some reds and, and oranges to bring it up to kind of a rusty color, rusty orange. Probably do a um, little recess shade as well. be honest a lot of this is kind of experimentation figuring out what what color works playing around with it like the um working on the previous building the um uh, can't remember what it's called now it's a broken down shack or whatever that comes with the wall pathways uh, box um kind of figuring out what washes and dry brushes where worked was all very experimental mainly because i was trying to kind of uh, match the colors and i had no idea what on hell had used so there was a lot of trial most of it was pretty close like dead on i'm, I'm pretty good at um, eyeballing colors and, and finding a match 
the ones I have trouble with, believe it or not, I don't know if it's a, a weird kind of color blindness I have or what, but um, certain shades or hues of purple. I guess I should say purple, brown, or um, gray, because I can't really tell them apart. Certain hues of those will appear like gray. So I don't know if it's the there's a, a violet color blindness, and because of pur uh, brown may be may have a little bit of violet. Like this Rhinox hide has a has a touch of a uh, of violet in it. Um, so maybe there's a, a violet color blindness that I'm not aware of. But anyways, the, they'll turn they'll turn like gray, like a dark gray to me, and I, I have no idea what color I'm looking at. So. That's why I tend to paint very bright, uh, bright purples rather than uh, more muted, desaturated purples. I mean, I have no problem with reds or greens or any of that, but definitely have problems with purples. Okay, I got that one done. Let's go ahead and get this one done here. A little bit more right outside. I know we're jumping around a whole whole lot, um, but I'm just kind of wanting to get some coverage done on a certain uh, on a few places, so it's not all that blue everywhere because the blue is just kind of overwhelming in places. So I'm trying to. I'm going to get some different colors in here to, to break up that blue a little bit. And it also, you know, it shows there's some progress being made. So I hope you guys are um, okay with seeing this on a third stream. I don't know if I'll be able to finish it in a third stream. Um, I'll try and do some some little things that aren't like uh, points I want to make, like you know showing you how to do a particular thing. Um, so I'll have some progress made off stream, but like. I'm going to try and finish it up in a third. I don't know if that'll happen or not. Uh, hold on one sec so I don't have a brush in my mouth. <laughs> Discord is having a conniption, but assuming the message went through, check my DMs later. Can't speak for anyone else, but here to hang out. Painting is just what keeps the hands busy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Have you have you been getting some hobby and done stick? I know you're kind of in a you're kind of in a hobby funk for a bit. Are you are you getting shit done? And if not, are you thinking about getting stuff done? Because you know, mentally preparing for it is part of it. I'm definitely going to get a uh, a PG-13 rating for my uh, my stream today. I'm 
dropped one f bomb and a couple s's. <laughs> Whoops. I usually try and keep that in check, but today, I don't know. My filter is just not on. Could be lack of sleep. <laughs> I only slept two and a half hours last night, so maybe that's it. Little done a pretty major modification to the printer. Have started printing off some discount Adeptus Titanicus stuff. Gear guts, gargant are 25% normal size of fulfillment cost. Print times are reasonable. They just stop being afraid of this Vallejo architecture. Finish making the artillery shell. It's gonna hit here token. Interesting. I built two more tanks because it's way easier to push past artist block to build than it is to paint. That is true. That is true. That is very true. <laughs> I will say, I don't think your DMs came through, though. Because I'm looking and I don't see it. Yeah. Yeah. Last message I have from you is on February 19th. <laughs> so that's a ways back. Can increase the size of your gray tide all day. It's getting over the yes, I can paint them good enough. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a hard one. And you know, sometimes I suggest just doing just do base coat. Just go in and get your base coat done on you know a unit um you know make it a msu if you have to you know small five-man unit if you have to but get a base coat down on that unit and maybe the next day get the shade down and then the next day you know get your your highlights highlight one of your highlights built in just plug away a little bit at a time you don't have to you don't like to have instant results. Um, but some results is better than no results, you know? Okay, no problem. I do understand what it's like to push past that. It's, it's a very difficult thing, and it's, and it's a very personal thing. Like, I can tell you what works for me, but it's not going to work for you because it's, it's a personal thing. It's what worked for me, but may or may not work for you. So, I mean, honestly, what mine was was just, you know, making that choice, that willpower choice. To get there and do it because well you know i quit smoking if i can quit smoking i can freaking paint right so that, that's that's what works on me like i i did the hard thing i've done the hard thing already painting is nothing i quit smoking right so that's what motivates me but that may not work for you But uh, nothing is nothing is too hard to overcome for me when I realize I quit smoking. <laughs> I 
ironically enough, my wet palate sponge has been floating in the bathroom sink for three days now. Wow. <laughs> okay. One that is still floating there too, that, well, you haven't used your bathroom sink in three days. Stig. <laughs> That's a little weird. What are you doing to me? Oh, uh, let's see here. I need what paint here? I think we'll do this one. We'll do this uh, Kalahari orange. Another desert color. We'll do that as a base color from the window here. Oh, it's a half bath. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Not your main bath. I got gotcha. you. All right. Kind of worried me there, my friend. <laughs> Now, I can kind of slot this in here because I'm going to be airbrushing it and all. And I still have the, the trim to do around it. So it doesn't have to be neat and pretty. Actually, I think I'm going to use a bigger brush, though. That little brush is just swiping at it with a flea tail. For whatever reason, it's scary to make the jump from this is a failed print. I'm slapping paint on just to go around to other people are going to see this at a war gaming night. And that's clever. I've never smoked, but I have mostly a bench from my birthday and back up. Dropped almost 40 pounds since Halloween. Nice. Very nice. So, yeah, that, that would be that's going to be my next biggest challenge is, is losing weight. <laughs> And believe me, that is definitely a lot easier when you smoke. Uh, back when I smoked, I could drop, I could drop weight, like I could drop it off at the grocery store, pretty much, right? But uh, without the smoking, <laughs> and the fact, of course, you know, older, so metabolism is slowed down and stuff like that. It's it's going to be a much bigger challenge. But when I was when I was younger and smoking, I could I could drop the weight in a heartbeat. I think the most radical one was when I first when I first moved up to uh, Habersham. Um, I was coming from the big city to the small country town, and uh, I went on a lettuce and water diet. I figured the lettuce would keep the pipes moving, and the water kept me hydrated. You know, because you need water to live. And that was all I ate and drank was water and lettuce. drop the weight like crazy Super hard for me, comfort eater. Yeah, I am too. I mean, well, comfort slash depression eater, however you want to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm. Yep. We are really struggling with the video today. I wonder which end that's on.
It's okay. I mean, I know you're trying your best. I just, I, I'm curious if it's on a, um, my end or yours. I, I know we're supposed to get some really bad weather tonight, and I was wondering if maybe y'all are getting hit with the, the thunderstorms already, which I know that tends to affect internet quality for some reason. You may not have been around when I asked last time, so this is not me blaming you at all. I'm not. I'm not. I promise. <laughs> it's just wonder what's going on. Uh, just had a big old gust of wind and rain right as I said that. Nice. <laughs> uh, well, at least you guys aren't in a tornado alley where I used to live in uh, Ackworth. Like every single Friday, Saturday night, I spent it in the tub with the cat because of tornado warnings. And, and you know, they weren't like watches. They were warnings. <laughs> like it's, it's here. It's been spotted. It's in the area. Find shelter, and I, I didn't have a basement there, so I'm 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 huddled in the bathroom, in the tub, with a cat in my lap, and I've got, <laughs> I got emergency rations in there. There's a, a jar of peanut butter, and a loaf of bread, and a gallon of water, uh, for in case we're stuck in there for a while. Ooh, pretty rainbow puke. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was like every freaking weekend. It was horrible. Yeah, they weren't threats. They were promises. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, I've never seen so many tornadoes in, in a place that wasn't, you know, like Kansas. But it's something, I guess, about the way the, the land shape, you know, it's kind of like a, a valley. Ackworth sat in a valley, I think. And it just kind of like funneled all the storms through there. Strangely enough, though, never had any any mass, any damage from it, really. I had a I had a satellite dish from a neighbor. Um, it was ripped off their house and shot through the wall of mine. But that's the only damage I ever had. A few shingles here and there, but mostly was that uh, that satellite dish is the only major damage I ever had from a tornado. Yeah, that was a that was a crazy place to live. I was so glad to to move up here where I have a basement and uh, no longer have to sit in the bathtub with a cat. Because <laughs> let me tell you, trying to hold a cat in a bathtub for a couple hours not easy to do. Even a cat that likes you does not want to be held for a couple hours. And a, an asshole cat like mine, definitely not easy. Those are a lot harder to paint than I thought they would be. Those little, um, <clears throat> pane dividers or whatever you want to call them, the window pane dividers, they are so thick. It makes it hard to get a decent smooth coat of, uh, paint on the panes.
makes it easy to pick up the dividers when you go to paint them later. But ooh, up until then, no cool. All right, let that dry for a second. Tell you what, let us get lettuce, lettuce and water, lettuce. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of dry brushing, but first, I'm gonna put some protection on here. This is just prevent a little bit of um. A bit of the dry brush over over brushing, I guess. Tape, you shouldn't have to worry about it taking your paint off. Well, that just went right exactly where the other piece was, huh? Went down there against the brick. Okay. Really? Like I said, this 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 will catch like the the gross overbrush strokes, so you don't have to worry about getting on your um, on the main paint. Guess what we have to do again? We got to clean your brush. How about that? Always clean your brushes. This one hopefully will be a little easier to clean since it's relatively new paint. Shouldn't be dried and caked in there like that other one was. Although this was pretty caked. Probably should have cleaned it right away, but I was just trying to avoid having to clean so many brushes. And here we are cleaning more brushes. Okay, that should get it right there. Ooh, I need another roll of towels down here. I'm down to the bottom of the roll. Where they all have that curve built in. Curl built in. And down to the end. Now that particular brush, the one that I just cleaned... Or in, in the process of cleaning, this is not one of those that you want to uh, stick in alcohol because I do believe, while maybe not a Kalinsky sable, it is a natural hair brush of some sort. That's why it's so soft and has held up so well. Um, so definitely want to use your your good brush soap on it. 
I don't know how the new elves are. Like I said, this 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 elf is twelve years old, maybe in an old. Let's see, not quite twelve. It's it's ten years old. So it's ten years old because so I started painting in two thousand, late two thousand twelve. So um. But I mean, I didn't, you know, I don't like not nonstop use it either, but it's, it's still held up really well. But in the 10 years since I bought it, they could have changed uh, the bristles that are used. So that may be, you know, a nasty synthetic. I don't know. But I'm going to go look for some in the next day or two. And if they are still uh, the similar hair quality as this, I'm going to buy a bunch. That way I have some for... One for every color, and I don't have to do color changes. Right? No more color changes. Okay. So we did burnt red as the base for our brick. Um, we're going to dry brush brick red back. After that purple has toned it a more red color, we're going to come back and do this again as a dry brush. And then we'll put on a little bit of Calvary, Calvary Brown, which is a little bit more orange to highlight it up and then we'll pick out some bricks that are uh some different color bricks with oranges so back and forth up and down or just down. Either way. Back and forth, down. So this will look a whole lot better once we knock in those um, those random uh, lighter color bricks. Um, at least that's the way it did on my other one. It looked a lot better once I did that. Okay, now we'll switch over to our... Um, Calvary Brown. I'm going to try and do a little bit lighter dry brush with this one. Basically, going to do top down on this. Maybe a little left to right, but main top down. Okay. Okay. 
Oh my goodness, is that it? Is that is that time? Oh my goodness. All right, so we are getting close to wrapping up. Like I said there, that is my social media link there, that Willow link. It will take you to all my socials, my my Twitches, my my Facebooks, my Instagrams, my um Discord even. Um so please click that link. Do the likes, the follows, the subs, all that stuff, because they are free and they are nothing but helpful to me. Um, it would be most appreciated. And if you aren't already following Play Weird, well, what are you waiting for? Do that. Do that. Um, thank you all for uh, hanging out here and watching this little terrain build. We're going to finish up this brick here, and that's probably going to about wrap us up. We've got a little bit. we got five minutes, so we might could do a, something else between now and then. Maybe get some wash on something. Um, like I said, we will do a little bit of work on this guy uh, between streams because I want to get some of the tedious stuff taken care of. Um, like painting those uh those individual bricks that'll probably be something i do off stream um because you guys don't need to see that right you don't want to see me painting an individual brick every six or eight bricks right um but yeah got some progress done today yeah tiger thank you for hanging out i appreciate it and McBluff as well, and Doug when he was here. Llama. Time does fly. Yep. I appreciate it, McBluff. Thank you for hanging out. So, yeah, we're, we're starting. It. We're starting to look like a house, guys. It's starting to look like a little bit of a house here. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's, it's getting there, right? Yeah, yeah, we made a little a little progress today. <laughs> that made my little black heart swell. <laughs> nice. Uh but again, guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Um a little work done. Hopefully that's in frame. I don't want to turn it too much for it so it falls apart. But uh, we're, we're getting there. Um, we'll see you guys again next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Doug will lead us off next week on Monday at 3 p.m. And then uh, I think it's Virick on Tuesday and then me on Wednesday and then Eleanor on Thursday. Um, again, have a great day. And uh, until we see you next week, hobby on and stay weird. Thanks, Tiger. Appreciate it. <laughs>